Welcome to Four Seas One Family, where we talk about life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. I'll be talking to Mr. Wu Wenxing. He's the host of the YouTube channel, Mr. Wu in Europe. I'll be talking to him about his thoughts on U.S.-China relations and how it affects the world. I'll be breaking this interview up in sections. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. So without any further ado, here's the interview. I would like to welcome the host of the show, Mr. Wu in Europe. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm really happy to have you on the show today. You know, I've been I've been watching your stuff, and uh, you know, and I finally made the decision to get you on the show after I watched uh, uh, one of your uh, uh, episodes called "The Dark Minions Behind Racism," and that was very very interesting. But we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Hey, introduce yourself to everyone. Okay. Thank you. Well, you see, uh, the, the reason I started the channel is because, uh, well, I would say encouraged by some uh, friends of mine. Uh, they said, well, Manian or Mr. Wu, you know, you are you are born in Hong Kong and then you moved to Sweden when you were only 18 and study in Sweden and then work for a Swedish company and then you moved to Germany and, and your professional job during the 40 years of uh, professional life, you have been traveling uh, to... Uh, Hundred countries and uh, doing business, uh, you know, in all continents, from uh, Japan to America, and uh, and also I spent a lot of time in the mainland China and Taiwan, by the way. So so they all encouraged me, Nate, with your international experience, and uh, you you should you know share this uh, with people. I I totally agree. So so I started it, and and but maybe uh, another very important motivation is not just my. My, my experience in the world, but also because I noticed uh, there are a lot of um, uh, propaganda going on in this world, particularly from mainland China. And, uh, and they, do, they do manage to cheat uh, quite a lot of people. And I don't want people to be cheated. So that was maybe the, the most important motivation that I think I better share the truth with the world. Were there any, was there any particular um, event or any particular type of uh, article that promoted you that said, "Yo, oh, yes, do this. Your friends, okay, they're saying you have a lot of opinions. But before that, before they even brought that up to you or gave you the uh, kind of like impetus to to do what you do here on, on YouTube at Mr. Wu in Europe, what, was there any particular type of time bomb? Yeah, Great question, because it's always like that. It's a special event or special, you know, thing that triggers yeah? uh, a, a certain uh, important idea. And I would say the event, you know, if we talk about the event, actually it was the, the massacre in Tiananmen Square that triggered me. You see, uh, when I was, uh, say, in the, in, the, in the 70s, I was already a, a young engineer so working with, uh, you know, a, a huge project to, uh, to make automation in, in power technology, in industry, and so on. And, and then, of course, the China was also a kind of a market. So I was exposed also to the Chinese. And, uh, and they welcomed me, you know, the communist uh, 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 officials. They really treated me like a prince, yeah? And... Uh, and, uh, and, and I have to say that my wife, you know, I have a, a European wife here. Yeah? She's originally from Austria. And she was actually reminding me, you know, be careful. They are so nice to you. They, they probably, they want something from you. Uh, and she was right. She was totally right. So they were extremely nice to me for maybe 10 years. And then came the massacre at uh, Tiananmen Square. And that woke me up and say all this smiling face from the uh, official and all this uh, luxury car coming to the airport and pick me up, you know. Uh, at that time, you know, they, they didn't pick me up with Mercedes because in the 80s, there was not so many Mercedes in China yet. But I was picked up by Hong Qi, the red flag, you know, which is the, the most luxurious uh, limousine they had, yeah. So, and, and, and but the, the Tiananmen Massacre, 
work well. It, it, no matter what they told me, what, how they tried to explain, it's impossible for them to convince me that it was the right thing. Well, they never say that it was right uh, to kill all these uh, thousands of students, but they claim that they never killed those students. And this is uh, terrible because uh, I, I even happened to encounter uh, a doctor who worked in Beijing at that time, who witnessed the whole thing and see all this bloody uh, 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 reality, yeah? And, and, and piles of the dead bodies in, 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 in the, of the young students and so on. And then they claim that they never kill anyone. So I say, Jesus, this is, this is not a normal uh, government. This is a very, very deceptive government, you know. They, they, they have no problem to lie. So I said, no, I cannot see the whole world being cheated, being deceptive by, by this uh, uh, Communist Party of China. And, and as time gone by, uh, because they have succeeded in the deception, so, so Chinese Communist Party is getting more and more power. So they were then becoming uh, from, a, from a regional power to a global power. Then I was thinking, Jesus, this is uh, really dangerous if, uh, if a global power is so deceptive and, and, and so good in making propaganda, then the world will encounter a lot of disaster. So that's why I'm just a, a, a one single person, but still, I think uh, uh, there's a good reason for me to try my best uh, to wake up as many people as possible. So that was maybe uh, those events that triggered me. Now, a second event, which not triggered me because the massacre tricked me, but the second event uh, made me even more convinced that what I have been, what I have started to do is, is right. And what the Communist Party has been doing is really evil. And that was interesting enough, I have to mention that uh, uh, I went to China with my wife because both my wife and me, we are very interested in spiritual practice. Okay? So we have been trying different kind of spiritual practice in China. And at the end, we found a very good practice called the Falun Gong, Falun Dafa. You know, it's a meditation yes. school. So we started the practice and find it excellent. You know, all the other spiritual practice after one or two or maximum three years, we, we found it, uh, no, we, we, don't, we don't move forward. So we, we look for the next one. And this one, uh, we stayed there for 26 years now. And, uh, and yeah, so, and after a few years of practice, then suddenly the Chinese Communist Party banned Falun Gong, yeah, bans Falun Dafa. And that for me is crazy because I am so convinced that Falun Dafa is something really China needs to make people more truthful, compassionate, and, and tolerant. This is great value, yeah? This is exactly what China needs, and they banned it, and they start to jail people, kill people, and even take organ from them, organ harvesting. So, so that was uh, the second event that made me to understand this is a very evil party, the Communist Party. It is not a normal political party, not a normal political government. It's is I, I used to say actually is is the is the biggest mafia of the world. Oh, oh God, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow you down a little bit because you're moving at the speed of light and so many so much detail is coming out because you experienced this. Let there be a clear separation. There is a difference of separation between people and their governments. But there's more we can talk more about that later. But you know, it's 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 such an emotional uh impact to those who actually are on the ground or those who know people on the ground, and you are an example of that. Moving to another issue, and I'm going to come back to this, what you're, you're, what you're talking about, because you, you obviously have an insider's view and, 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 and personal relationships there. Why do you see, because back when China opened their doors after the uh, industrial, uh, excuse me, uh, Wen Daga, I mean, the Cultural Revolution, and not even talking even behind the, uh, the Great Leap Forward, we see China allowing 
Western nations to uh, open up their market b business. And China benefited a lot, got a lot of foreign capital inside, but they put a lot of regulations on governments, on uh, uh, foreign governments, of course, because a lot of foreign governments were a lot more concerned with earning some money there. Capital, wow, large population, that's a large number of cons consumers we had. But no, China was very careful. Why do you think the Western world, why do you, well, I'll, I'll change the term. Why do you think the Western world has been so blind or just easily accept all the terms that mainland China government put on Western firms to help them build up their own economy? That's a tough one. Okay. Well, I think uh, the reason is uh, the Chinese Communist Party are very good in identifying weakness of people and are very good in utilizing weaknesses of human beings, okay? And so Western uh, uh, people are also human beings, yeah? Uh, no matter what, uh, what, what, what the race is and what nationality, and they all have similar weakness. And the weakness is fame and gain, right? Most people, uh, they, they, they strive for fame and gain and particularly gain, you know, getting money, getting rich, getting power, so, and, and getting famous, of course. And so, so the Communist Party are, has been really uh, using, I would say, uh, extensively uh, a kind of uh, manipulative psychology yeah? to, to, to make people to be uh, symp sympathetic to them. Yeah? Uh, you may have heard about this uh, uh, United Front, which is a huge department within the party, right? And they, they, the only thing they do is to identify all the so-called influential people in the world and then figure out a strategy how to influence these influential people so that they think Chinese government is great, China is doing uh, good things, you know, and so on. So, so they, they start to, uh, so to, not only not to, 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 to uh, uh, defend uh, the, 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 the aggression from the communists, but they even start to help them, right? And think that they were doing good things. So, and this is, this is I would say, uh, the main reason. They have successfully been using uh, uh, the weakness of human beings. But on the other hand, we have to be aware that every time when a communist party has problems with their uh, politics and, and economy, they they make some sort of liberalization. This is not the first time after the Cultural Revolution. Before Cultural Revolution, you know, during this uh, so-called Great Leap Forward between 1959 to 1962, uh, Mao's uh, policy of, you know, uh, pushing all the people to make steel uh, led to a starvation in China. 40 million people die of hunger, and the economy was in the brink of uh, collapse. Yeah, and in this moment, they also started some kind of liberalization. I, again, allowing the farmer to have their own land, or at least uh, to not to dissolve this people's commune. Yeah, uh, and, and and everybody and so on. Uh, some sort of liberalization. They have always been doing like that, you know. But this is not a liberalization from the heart. They never want to give freedom to every individual uh, Chinese. They only give a certain degree of freedom because they are in big trouble uh, with the economy. And once they fix that problem, <laughs> then you know uh, they will they will uh, uh, tighten the freedom again. And actually, they are doing it now after forty years of liberalization. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much so. I mean. Yes. Yes, face it. The the movement with the United Front to actually, how would you say, uh, exponentially uh, progress themselves is through, well, like you said, what people want, fame and fortune. There are college professors or researchers in the United States who feel that they have not been noticed in Western world. So when they get an offer to speak at a gathering in mainland China, all expense paid, that does something to the ego and also on the financial line when they're willing to say, come over here, we'll pay you for research and boom, 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 boom. It's like fighting a war without a weapon. Basically, that's it. Now we see and, and we see situations where, well, if you are able to keep people happy, they will support you no matter what. OK, like, for example, yes, there are 
millions of people in China who are, are in better situations now in the first tier, second tier, the top tier cities now than they were before. And they've seen their lives getting better and better. So that's a dream that they will propagate, but not talk against. Because either they are afraid to, or they know what's going on, but they don't want to affect their upper progression. So that's the tide, right? That's, you don't want to shoot your horse in the foot when you're riding it very fast. And this is what I see. Now, you, you alluded to just now, there's a lot of things going on right now. There's a little revolution going on right now as far as um, the cutback or how would you say the pulling back on certain entrepreneurs and some technologies, yeah, we know about Mr. Jack Ma. We know about Alibaba. We know about uh, TikTok and all of this stuff. And now how their the economy is hitting a boom. And now Xi Jinping is telling everybody, these big entrepreneurs, your guys got to donate some money to the regular folks. We've seen education, the education sector has been taking a bomb. Can you comment a little bit about that? Because with your insight, uh, insight view and your relationships within China, you can talk in depth. So to understand Communist China, uh, I think it's important that uh, for the Communist Party, the central issue is not even money, but power. power. But of course, uh, money can also give you power. So that's why money is also in, in a way important. But the, the final thing they want is always power. So when they had problems, like after Cultural Revolution, yeah, their power was much weakened. Yeah? And so they liberalized. Yeah, but because they know they know that by allowing a certain degree of privatization, uh, economy will grow. Yeah, so they 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 use the traditional method of all uh, many dictators: the stick and the carrot. Okay, so when they are in trouble with the economy, they, they they provide more carrot and they hide the stick. But they never they never throw away the stick. They just hide it for a while, right? So, and with this carrot. It, it fits all the people like Jack Ma, whoever, yeah, and they become rich, yeah. But you see, being rich also being powerful in a way, yeah. So what happened is when a person like Jack Ma, let me just take him as an example. There are hundreds of Jack Ma in China, and uh, when the, when Jack Ma or similar people become uh, rich and really rich, become billionaire, then they become powerful. They become powerful. Uh, for example, I mean, I'll give you an example. I, as long as I know, Jack Ma was telling the people that I'm going to retire now. Actually, he was forced by the party to retire, but he didn't give up. He said, I will engage myself, I will devote myself for education. So he will, you know, spend billions to, you know, uh, influence the education. But that he made a big mistake because education seen by the Communist Party is a monopoly area of the party. Only the party is allowed to decide how the education should be. Yeah? And you, Jack Ma, try to, you know, get into that? Hey, come on, you know? So what happened is uh, the hidden stick uh, is being visible again. <laughs> so so uh, this is exactly what they've been doing. They never throw away the stick. Now, it's some people say, oh, Xi Jinping is bad because uh, Deng Xiaoping, Zhang Zemin, Hu Jintao, they all allow this and that freedom. Yeah, It's not true, not the whole truth. Yeah, uh, It is the strategy of the party that, 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 uh, that makes that they need a person like uh, Xi Jinping in order to, you know, uh, start to use the stick again. Yeah, uh, like... Another, another thing I want to explain, that because this is important, that we should not believe that if we get rid of Xi Jinping, everything will be fine. No, forget it. In order to get China, a, a better China, a beautiful China, we have to get rid of the CCP, not only Xi Jinping. And, and I give you another example. Uh, some people were telling me Xi Jinping is bad. He's so aggressive. You know, he's showing, uh, you know, this uh, so-called warrior diplomacy everywhere. i showing... I said, hey, come on. Already 40 years ago, Deng Xiaoping decided internally in the party, our strategy should be hide our strength and wait for our time or abide our time. Yeah? So, so what happened is they, they hide their strength for 30 years so that they could steal a lot of technology and they can 
through deception, attract a lot of capital from the West and feed themselves, become a big, dangerous red dragon. And the dragon bites back. And this is now we are in the time when the dragon is feeling strong and big and he starts to bite back. Yeah? And, and this is the time of Xi Jinping. So it's because Xi Jinping thinks our time has come. Now we don't need to hire our strength. Now we should show our muscle. Yeah? The only difference, if you pick another person, then he may say we should wait for another five years in order before we show our muscle. So what's the big difference? I would like to thank Mr. Wu for giving us the opportunity to understand what is happening behind the Great Firewall. And in part two, we'll go into deeper detail to learn even more about what is happening on the other side of the Great Firewall. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you're listening to our podcast, please download to help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. Remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.